Hello everyone, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. In today's video I'm going to show you a technique, a very simple technique and approach how you can actually prepare your own custom templates for e-ink devices or anything actually that you might want but so that the uh, real life grid that you see on the screen of the device actually mimics real world units. So what we're going to be covering here is how to prepare and how to create templates for one by one centimeter or one by one inch. It doesn't really matter. The technique is exactly the same. So let's dig in. All right, so let's start. Um, I'm in Photoshop and there's a couple of things that you have to keep in mind. First of all, you need to know the exact resolution and the exact pixel per inch uh, resolution of the device that you're making a template for. So for example, all 10.3 inch devices usually have a uh, resolution of 227 pixels per inch and a resolution of 1872 by 1505, I think, uh, pixels. But smaller devices, 7.8 inch devices, for example, have the same resolution but a different pixel per inch density at 300. So that PPI is basically the most important aspect that you need to keep in mind uh, when trying to create a template that will resemble real world scale. What does PPI mean? Pixels per inch. So that means if it's 227, we have 227 pixels in one inch. And that's exactly what we want uh, our device to represent. So both informations are crucial, the resolution itself, but the PPI is the one that will determine if your grid is going to mimic the real world size or not. So first of all, what you need to do is, uh, let's say, I'm just going to make an 1872 by, or actually, sorry, I'm going to switch here to pixels. I'm going to go 1505 is going to be the width and height is going to be 1872. Now the resolution pixels per inch, this is the one that's important. So for example, if I was creating a template for, um, I don't know, let's say Remarkable or Note 2 or Super Note A5, these are the resolutions that the display uses and they would also be at 227 ppi. So I could just click create and that would be that. However, if I was making a template for uh, Supernote A6 or Nova 2, then this value here would need to be at 300 so that you have the correct template. This is extremely important because otherwise it will not translate correctly on your device. So once you have that set up, you click create and then you have your template. Now that's fine. But what we need is a way to populate this into a grid of precise size. So what we want to have actually is a grid layout on our template where each of the squares will resemble the size that we're looking for, be it an inch by inch or a centimeter by centimeter or even a millimeter by millimeter. And in Photoshop, there is a way to actually do this quite easily. So first of all, you'll need to open up a new document. And in this case, we're preparing, let's say for uh, 227 PPI. And I want to create, let's say one centimeter by one centimeter. So I need to create one by one at 227 PPI. When I click create, that's the square size. So the next thing that I want to do in this little square is I want to introduce some lines so that they are outlining the uh, square itself. Now, we don't want to add all of the lines because the pattern's gonna repeat. We just need two border lines to add, the lower one and the right corner. So the easiest way to do that is to add a rectangle shape by clicking once. And the cool thing about the rectangle tool in Photoshop is that you can type in uh, values. So for example, I want my width to be one centimeter, but I want the thickness of that line that I'm creating via the rectangle to be two pixels. So I can do one centimeter by height two pixels. When I click create, I have 
uh, rectangle. Now, if uh, this rectangle is of a different color, then you can just click over here and change the color to whatever you want it to be. However, with this selected, I'm going to hit Control A to select everything. And now in the upper corner, I have my align tools. So I can align it all the way to the corner there and bloop, plop it to the bottom. So now we have this at the bottom. Next, I'm going to hit Control J to duplicate the, um, the same line. And I'm going to hit Control T or Command for transform. Now with this transform, uh, if you hold the cursor on the sides, you'll see this angular type of thing. And that's basically the rotation tool. So with the rotation tool, when it's actually uh, showing, if you hit and hold shift, it will snap to exact angles. So I'm gonna shift and click and drag until I have 90 degrees. I'm gonna release and hit enter. So now I have a 90 degrees oriented uh, uh, line and or a box. And I'm gonna hit now control A and I'm going to align it to the right side and all the way up. All right, so now I have my lines, uh, lower line and the upper line. I'm going to control click to select both layers here and go control E to merge the layers. Now the final thing that I need to do is to unlock the background and I'm going to simply delete the background because we no longer need it. Now with this you have prepared a pattern. So this is uh, your unit for a pattern. What we're going to do is we're going to convert this line thingy that we've created into a pattern that we can then distribute over anything that we want. Um, the way you can do that is you can go to edit and then you have define pattern here. And a good idea is to name them correctly. So for example, one by one centimeters um, at, and this is the resolution that we're gonna use. So 227 PPI. And I'll show you why that's important because you can't really see the lines and you can't differentiate is it at 300 PPI, 227 or 207, etc., etc. So this is a really important step so that they are actually usable. Now that we've done that, we can go back to our original document. I'm just gonna double check uh, by doing Control, Alt and I uh, to double check the resolution of the image and it says that it's 227, so we're good. There's two ways to actually uh, populate the pattern. You can either go manually to layer and new fill layer and then choose pattern. Or what I prefer is the shortcut over here, the circle with the black and white down the uh, middle. If I click on it all the way up, you can choose pattern from there. So once I click pattern, it's automatically gonna populate it with something. And you can choose your pattern here. Now you can see that I've already have a subfolder called grids, but um, let's say I choose this, that's a pattern as well. However, here is our pattern that we chose. Now by default, you won't see the names. By default, what you will see is the small thumbnail or maybe large thumbnail. Now you can also have small list or a large list. It really depends what you like. I prefer, because I'm dealing with this thing, I prefer text only, but yeah, large list also works. The only thing that's important is that you know that you can hit the gearbox here and to enable one of these options that will actually display the name that you're looking for of the pattern that you made. So now when I've clicked here, we suddenly have a new layer that's filled up with a one by one centimeter at 227 pixels per inch pattern. And once that's actually now saved and transferred to a device, you will have a grid of one by one centimeters. Now I can do the same thing here. I can just double click on the pattern and change it. And I've prepared in the same exact way uh, for uh, all of the other different types that I might need. So I have one by one inch at 207, 227, 300 PPI or 207 PPI, 227 and 300 for one by one centimeters. And it's organized this way. So whenever I need something like this, I just simply choose the one I need for the device that I need and presto, you're done. 
So what would I do next? Well, let's say I choose one by one centimeter and I'm good with that. Now I can actually move this around. And this one is actually uh, always going to be, this is endless because it's a pattern that's just simply being filled in. So let's say that, for example, you had a case of uh, Remarkable where you wanted to mask off something. Well, then you would simply add new layers and you would start masking things off um, either by using a white color or you could also add another mask in here if you wanted to, etc. etc. However, um, this is the basic extent of how to create these things. And now let's transfer them onto the different devices and compare with the ruler so that you can see how that actually works. And here are all three different formats. We have the 207 PPI on max three, one by one centimeter grid. We have 227 PPI, one by one centimeter on the remarkable one. And we have the 300 PPI, one by one centimeter on the Supernote A6 and the Nova 2. And if I take a ruler, you can actually see that they indeed are one by one centimeter and I'm going to show a close-up photo of that. Um, and I also wanted to kind of align them nicely here so that they look pretty. Now uh, one note, uh, there it's not one by one centimeters absolutely precisely. So at the range of maybe around 18 centimeters 20, and 18, 19 centimeters, you get a one millimeter offset. So it's a little bit less than one millimeter. And I'm guessing that's because of the rounding up differences. So that's not so much noticeable on the smaller format, but it is something to keep in mind on larger formats, especially on the Max 3. Because for example, if I were to measure one centimeter, that's fine. But now here at um, 19, uh, the line for the 19th one is at 18.9 millimeters. So the offset is there, um, but I guess that's because of the rounding up of the numbers or the resolutions or things like that. Certainly a more precise uh, template is possible to make, but this is um, this guide can be used to actually create even a finer template like that. For general use, I think this is pretty much good enough, but if you require more precision, then you can calculate off the, the offsets and try and play around to create a super uber spot on type of grid setup. But here they are and it works. All right, I hope that you liked the video and I hope that the technique actually helps you. Now, if you don't have Photoshop and you don't have that functionality of a uh, fill pattern and that kind of stuff, uh, fret not. Uh, all you need to do is actually create the exact same one square image that we uh, showed. And then all you need to do is copy paste, copy paste, copy paste like one row, and then just copy that whole row, copy two rows, etc., etc., etc. And yeah, it's a little bit more work, but it's really not that bad. So you can still get the same exact results regardless of what your uh, graphics editing package is. And even if you have the pattern, fill pattern functionality or not, uh, you can still get the same results. Now I've also included in the description below um, a link uh, to a small archive that actually contains six little templates and they are uh, one by one centimeter and one by one inch uh, templates for most standard devices um, that have the resolution of 1872 by 1404 uh, at 227 PPI at, and at 300 uh, PPI. And also for the larger format like the Max 3, which support the resolution of 2200 by 1650 at 207 PPI. So basically you can pick and choose either of those and they will fit most of the products out there. The grids are made in full black and that's most likely not what you want. The reason behind it is so that you can load it up in your own package and lower the transparency however much you want it to be. So you can customize it still to be uh, the way you want it to. Of course, feel free to kind of customize these any way you want. Uh, there's also in the archive a small text file which will describe which uh, standard fits for which of the most popular devices 
videos and that should help you out. Thanks for watching, I hope you liked the video, if you did please like and subscribe and consider ticking off the Facebook, Instagram and Twitter which are gonna become more alive now that I finally am starting to have some free time and some more time for the YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, thanks for the support and see you in the next video. Bye!